Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. This video, we're gonna redo the spoil board on my CNC. Let's go. So what is a spoil board? Basically, it is a surface that you can actually cut through your material when you're making through cuts on a CNC machine with router bits that the router bit can go into and eventually be replaced. This one is in sections. You can see here, it's got quite a bit of use to it. It's actually, well, it's been really great. I've actually trimmed this thing down quite a bit, probably like five or six different flattening passes we've done. But it's, eh, you can see here, I've actually gouged the surface a little bit here. And I don't have to replace these too often because, well, I've got this business kind of dialed in. My bits only go down a certain percentage lower than the actual plywood. And the only thing that changes around here typically is the thickness of the material by like, a hundredth of an inch or so, depending on where I get the plywood. So it's not that big a deal. So I do flattening passes, but as you can see, it's time, it's time. The last flattening pass I did almost clipped the screws that are holding this thing down. And the thing is, is that the screws are just into the MDF underneath. We're gonna change that. We're gonna go with threaded inserts and we're also gonna install some interesting new T-Track from Armor, this isn't all that new, but you can see there, it's got little pass-throughs right there and it should be interesting because instead of having to actually join the stop blocks all the way down at this end or that end you can just you know you get it so without further ado let's dive right into this thing hope you enjoy this one should be more upgraded hopefully you get something out of it let's dive the first order of business is you want to home this cc you do not want to start moving this thing around without homing it reason being it doesn't know the parameters and where it's gonna go. I don't have switches that tell it where to stop. Some CNC's do, which is great. This one, you home it, it's then programmed where to stop, not by switches, but by internal components. So, home it. Homing just means it goes to a specific spot in the CNC that it then knows where the parameters are on the bed for it not to go over and above, right? So you might be wondering why this piece of plywood and this little piece here are permanently affixed to the bed. And that's because I typically use specific blanks of plywood to make what I make. And I want it referenced exactly on the origin that I set. That way I don't have to set the origin every time to this and figure it all out. So I just leave these here, but this is unique to my situation. So it's time to remove the original T-Track. Actually worked really well, no complaints here. But I actually gave this to a maker friend of mine. He actually came by the other night and picked this up. So I'm glad it's gonna get a new home. You can see here, this is not really a tough thing to do. There's just quite a bit of screws involved in these spool boards that have strips that are replaceable instead of one big piece. Again, I don't have vacuum suction here, so this is the way we do it around here. Now you can see how close the MDF is. Ooh, man, even like that screw got clipped. So it's definitely time, and you can see just how much material has been taken away on this one-inch thick MDF. That's quite a bit. So this CNC's bed is roughly 42 by 27, 28, something like that. So I cut these MDF strips into three-inch sections, and you can see here it's definitely time to take them out. So with all of these screws coming out, it's definitely got some imperfections. I'm going to show you a quick trick on how to handle that. Um, but it does have a couple, well, a lot of screw holes in it that have a little bit of raised areas where the screws have come out and bring in fibers with. So I always keep a sanding block near the CNC for this reason. Uh, one has a rough, uh, I believe this is around an 80 grit and then a 400 grit. Um, and that is to basically just kind of get this thing with all these little fibers on it. Just take care of it. So here's how you do that. I also do the same process on the strips that are the spoil board when the whole thing is completed. Every few cuts or so, you need to get the jagged edges off, no problem. So I'm trying to wrap my brain around how many of these T-Tracks I'm going to use. The last one had seven. I think I'm going to use six for this one. I really didn't need that many. So I'll take one away. Now, the easiest way to find the measurement of the strips that you're going to put down, basically put all the T-Tracks down in one section and then measure up to the very first edge of the last T-Track. You see that? That's your measurement. Then you divide that by how many strips you want, and there's your number. I believe I got this to be around three and a half or so, maybe 3.65, something like that. Um, I made a bit mistake here, but I'll show you about that later. 
So I've drawn up a uh, little diagram here in Vectrix VCarve. And you can see here that I'm gonna go, yeah, that's gonna be what we're gonna cut out because we've got to install, yeah, those right there. Okay, let's do it. So I've got this scrap piece of MDF I'm gonna put down first. I'm gonna just barely staple this thing down. And then I'm gonna make kind of like a, a jig or a holder to hold each of these pieces as you see here, I'm going to go ahead and screw them down with a couple of just temporary clamps, and then we're going to get to cutting. That way I can just repeat this process over and over again to make these holes. All right, got everything set up, ready to go. I would say it's now time to get to it. Using an eighth inch compression bit here, and once one is finished, I'm just going to put in the other one. Actually, that first one was a little off center, so I reprogrammed it and did it the right way. Didn't catch it until I made the first one. So now these are dead center in the pieces, and you can see here it makes pretty quick work. Now you could do this on the drill press with some positive stops. I did that for my last one, and that worked out really well as well, but in efforts for trying to practice and, and learn everything I can about this machine, I went ahead and did it this way. So I removed this piece of MDF and for whatever reason, I did not film this part, no clue why, but I made a bunch of holes in the existing MDF to receive these threaded inserts. A little CA glue, all you need. Make sure they're below the surface. You don't want these raised up at all. And here's the mistake I made earlier. I cut my strips just a bit too wide. Reason being, once I, or I guess the mistake would have been, I didn't accommodate for the spacing. So I have to trim these down. As I was laying these out, in the T-tracks throughout, the holes weren't lining up. But now that I got a little bit more wiggle room, they're lining up for sure. And this is actually a pretty satisfying process. I'm using a drill to put these machine screws in, and of course there's a, a bit of a function where it won't over tighten them. And they all just went in pretty nice. I think this is coming together pretty nicely actually. So when I install these T-tracks, do this because I've learned from experience. Here's how I do it. You make one self-tapped hole first, and then you go ahead and put that screw in place, locking the position in. Then you can go back and start drilling your other self-tapped holes, and thusly put in all the screws that you need. Because if you start just drilling holes, it might wander a little bit, and you never know. One might not be exactly the right fit. Now, with all those T-Tracks installed, it's now time to, well, you guessed it, flatten it. And I finally upgraded to a big boy flattening bit. This thing, whew, oh boy, this thing was absolutely, uh, it was scary. I'm not going to lie. When I turned this thing on and it started going, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I was actually a little scared to put the phone or the camera, I do film on my phone. I put the phone up to this while it was spinning. Check it out. This horrified me. But... It worked amazingly. Okay, so I am going to test this thing out in the middle of this wasteboard, and I'm not going to remove that dust shield. I love you guys, but I'm <laughs> sorry. You're just gonna have to trust me that it's cutting. Uh, removing that and doing this would just put dust everywhere. So I actually don't like don't like using tool pass for this. I do this by hand with the just the controller. Uh, it turns out it works well for me, so that's what we're going to test out now. At this point, it's running full bore, and I'm barely putting the Z-axis down just a little bit. You can see it. Oh. And now I'm moving it towards the camera, and we definitely got some material coming out, so I think we're going to go with this depth of cut. Try it out, see how it goes. We can always go just a little bit further down if we need to, but I think this is going to work well. And like I said, you can set up a tool path for this, you know, contingent upon whatever your bed size is. But I like doing this by hand and by eye. Just take my time with it and make sure to never go up or down that Z-axis during this process. 
Take your time with it, and you should be all right. Although I can't control it with, like, an Xbox controller. I've seen a lot of makers do that. That would have been kind of cool, too. But the uh, Rich Auto controller did just fine. So over to the table saw, I'm gonna put a stop block to make an exact size of the MDF pieces, but just a little bit smaller. I'm gonna cut out a few of these strips. And I need to get like, I'm gonna get the burrs off these. I wanna sand them. And this thing, I swear, I developed this because I sell small parts and I use it all the time. And I recommend it to anyone who has any type of sanding to do where they want precision control. They could turn their sander, most brands, I've got a video on it. I'll actually link it below. You can turn your sander into this really precision control device. It's awesome. Check it out. And so with those pieces really nicely sanded, I mean, maybe they don't need to be, but I like them too. I'm going to install them just with a few brad nails right where I can actually still use the T-Track. Although I can just insert clamps from the inside now because of the functionality of the pass-throughs. But either way, that's the way I did it. So using these pieces of plywood just tacked in place, they give me that 90 degree reference surface. That way when I set the origin, I can just repeat it over and over again, just like I did on the last spoil board. So at this point, I'm just figuring things out. You can see the stop block actually hits the supports I just made. And that's okay because the stop blocks are exactly the same size. So I can still get that 90, that 90 degree reference. Although I ended up doing a bit of a different technique later on that you'll probably see later in the video, but this thing worked really well. And so you can see there on the right hand side, I used a little piece of mahogany as a spacer and that's what I'm using to keep that 90 degree reference, but there you go. Okay, so that is that portion of this video. That's the new spoil board. There is more to this video, but I'm gonna show you something I've developed and I think it's pretty cool. It actually holds my own body weight and I'm gonna show you that now. But if you tuned in just for the spoil board, by all means, click away. If you wanna see what else I've done, stay tuned. I think it's pretty cool. All right, let's dive in. Okay, new section of the video. I get asked this quite a bit. Chris, are you ever gonna sell this as a tangible product, okay? It's basically what I've built this on. I've used this in multiple places in my shops to make countertops and whatnot, and it's really strong. But the pieces underneath are pretty large, and to ship them off is hugely expensive. So I thought I'd take it upon myself to develop something that's just as strong, but doesn't take up so much material. And that's what this portion of the video is. So enjoy, I hope you like it. Maybe even if you like it so much, you might get a pair. Oh, that sounded wrong. I didn't mean like get a pair, like get a pair. I meant like get, like, like get, like. <laughs> so enough silliness aside, I'm gonna go ahead and make some shelves using these brackets. So I'm cutting down some old scrap. This is like some old plywood that came on a delivery that I had, but the piece was so damaged that they just gave it to me. I figured I'd use it for this. So we're gonna make a few lines here where we can pre-drill some holes. I'm gonna go ahead and stack these two together since I'm gonna make two shelves. I'm going to pre-drill some holes, and every time I film me drilling something, I feel like I am dead set, dead on. And then when I come back and look at the footage, it's never 90 degrees to the surface. It's always just a little bit off. Anybody else got that same problem? <laughs> and of course, I like to keep all my bits on hand here, but don't leave your drill out in the rain. See that? <laughs> a little rust. Got to take care of that. But everything seems to work still. All right, so we're going to move to this countersunk bit. I get asked a lot where I get these things. They come in a three-pack, and you can find them at Harbor Freight in the drill bit section. So they may be on their website, but it's just easier just to go to there. and Go to there. Just go to there and pick them up. <laughs> so in the process of me making those shelves, I decided to go ahead and cut these new products out. Here they are. These are the brackets. You can see I can get about eight of them per sheet. Not too much, but I think it's well worth it. And having pre-drilled holes is really great for aligning these things. And of course, I use the CA glue and PVA glue trick as clamps. Just kind of hold them in place before I go back and reinforce the screws. If you want to save 15%, I always would recommend uh, Starbond CA glue for sure. It's my favorite, and you can save yourself some money. Links are below, and the coupon code is below. Oh, as and well. also, I made a video a few months back about you've been overpaying for hardware for far too long. I get all of my hardware from C. SH hardware, custom service hardware, their proprietary screws and whatnot, you could save 50 to 80% on some of this stuff. It's absolutely incredible. I'm gonna link them below. In case you didn't see that video, it's definitely worth a look to save yourself some money on all the hardware that you need for your shop. I'm not even sure if I should try this, but I go ahead and do it anyway. And, oh yeah. <laughs> not sure why I thought it was funny, but it worked. Full disclosure, that is 260 pounds of testing and R&D 
and it worked. So there you go. I think holding sheet goods like this is going to be no problem. Um, even if I stack these things up two or three feet, I think I really think that these shelves could hold 300, 400 pounds, maybe even more. I actually need to find a local gym. If you're in the 904 area code or in St. John's County here, um, let me know if I could uh, do it like a little setup so we could test it with a whole bunch of plates. That would be awesome. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate you guys being here all the way to the end. I sent out my first email newsletter. I've never done that before with the people who have already purchased something from me. And I basically called them, they're my Eglimpse Insiders. And it was pretty interesting because I didn't think I would get much traction, but we actually sold quite a few just through that newsletter. So if you were one of those uh, few people, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And now they're available for everyone. So check it out. Really appreciate it, guys. And I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Hey guys, this is my CNC machine. It is a Penguin Gen 2. Every Penguin CNC is named after a specific type of penguin. This is a smaller variety of penguin, so, and it's been great. This has been an absolute workhorse. If it were a CrossFitter, it would say things like, no days off, never quit, never die, that kind of thing. Knock on wood, All right? <laughs> Just kidding. But it's been amazing. But the outfeed table is actually on my table saw, not a CNC. You dumbass.